ప్రభావంతమైన శ్రీ నృసింహుడు ఆదర్భించ నమస్కారం సమస్య కెన్ మూవ్ ఇన్ ఫ్రంట్ ఐ డోంట్ బైట్ ఓకే మూవ్ ఇన్ ఫ్రంట్ such an honor uh, to be here this afternoon because i have been speaking to rohitanna about visiting udha for over 11 months and i had a certain idea of what udha would be and it just kept growing in my head and last week i pinned him down and i said if i don't come in december all this one year's worth of conversation will be absolutely pointless so let's just make it happen so thank you to all of you here for enabling it on such a short notice unfortunately like akka said rohitanna himself is not here but um, my selfish desire is that this is not the only time i'm going to be coming because from in the one hour that i've come my whole heart is taken over by this space and um, to be very very honest that is why i said i do not want to come here with any agenda about what we are going to be speaking about i wanted to discover that with you all and i think one of the biggest things that came to me when i stepped in here one hour ago was how much trust it must take for three sets of people to be here one is the educators the facilitators who are making this possible for you the second is the parents who are trusting their children enough and trusting themselves enough to enable this space for the kids and finally for the learners who are coming here every day six days a week and are opening their hearts so i i just took this idea of trust and i said is trust an easy concept in in sanatana dharma if we look when we tell stories we tell them in very linear fashions rama was born ravana was born tak 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 anta vijayadashmi then he came back they probably mogi to kathe but there's much more there are moments of great conflict that rama goes through sita goes through anjaneya swami goes through that pandavas go through even kauravas go through everybody goes through them but how do we navigate through them because that trust in many ways is similar to the journey that all of us will also face where at every stage in a journey like this especially with an education system like this there could be questions of am i doing the right thing is this the best thing for my child is this the best way to educate this child could come for a teacher could come for a parent and even the child could wonder is this the best way to be educated so these doubts are very normal and there is just so much of wisdom that is waiting to open itself from puranas from itihasas so today we'll take some such moments and today i had the pleasure of such an intimate audience so i would not like this to be a one way street so i am going to periodically ask you questions one is to make you answer second to make sure you are awake so with this today let's look at some moments from some puranas some itihasas where we look at what does trust me okay so how many of you are familiar with the ramayana here then i don't have to tell the story right i think one moment early in the katha where rama is growing tulsi das said tumaka chalata rama chandra the rama chandra is growing like a little baby is happy dashratha is looking at him saying abba na gurga kausalya is looking at him saying yachana vidano this rama is growing like this nobody has any care in the palace that he has come for another purpose they don't know it meanwhile something else happens vishwamitra suddenly comes so i'll fast forward to that moment we we know this from tv serial ramayana where vishwamitra comes angrily and marches straight to the sabha i'll skip past all that into one moment vishwamitra says i am doing a yagna i need your son for yagna rakshana will you send him to me what does dasharatha say no to this does he agree why does he say no rama is very young rama is very young he says rama is only 16 years of age i will come with you vishwamitra said i have not come to shop shop to bargain i asked for rama i will take rama and go so dashratha says something very beautiful this is valmiki's poetry is also very beautiful and i'm going to ask all of the kids a question instead of saying rama cannot come dashratha second time says how can rama come rama has lotus eyes how can he come with you to do your yagna rakshana why does he say this 
If somebody says, can you send your child? And you say, ayo, my child has lotus eyes on the end sense of them. What does it mean? See the, see the poetry here. Rama has lotus eyes. Lotuses only bloom in which part of the day? In the morning or in the night? The morning, in the daytime. When the sun comes, the lotus is bloom. Correct? Rama has to go there and do Yajna Rakshana. When, he's, when Vishwamitra is doing the Yajna, the Rakshasas come and attack at night. Which means Rama has to be awake at night. But Dashratha is saying, my son is going to get up at dawn and he's going to go to sleep when it's dark. So he's not going to help you at all. He sleeps correctly at 7 o'clock in the night. He cannot stay up for you. It's another way of saying he's a young boy. He's not ready for all of this. But Vishwamitra says something to Dashratha. Dashratha is the parent. We may say Rama is Parabrahma, Rama is Narayana, Nar Narama is Nirguna, Nirakara, Parabrahma. All that is a set. For a parent, a child is a child. Whether it is Yashoda, whether it is Dasharatha, whether it is Devaki, whether it is Vasudeva. So, Dasharatha cannot see all of this. For Dasharatha, it is his child. Vishwamitra looks at him and he says, I know who your son is, so send him with me. This is a moment of conflict for Dasharatha. Does any parent like being told by someone else that I know who your child is? No matter how much they may be an educator, no matter how much they may be a Vishwa Guru, and Vishwamitra is also known for a temper. So, Yenadru, if you get him into a bad mood, Yen and Buttara, you know, Anta, that bhaya is also there. But it is in this moment that Dashratha thinks, something is making Vishwamitra say, take my son. So, Dashratha just gives it. Gives him complete leeway and he says, take my son and go. When he goes, look at the moment after that. We go straight from there and we want to immediately get Ramas and Sita get married. But before that, we'll pause a little bit. What happens when they go? Vishwamitra is walking ahead. Rama and someone else go. Who goes? Who asked Lakshmana to go? Vishwamitra came and asked for Rama. Dasharatha asked for Rama to come. Who asked Lakshmana to go? Nobody. When Lakshmana was going, nobody said, Hey, Ninya Kokti Diyapa, Ninya Pas Bhanta, Yaroyalila. But when Lakshmana went, Rama also did not say, Lakshmana, why are you coming? Two people who trusted in this moment, Dasharatha and Vishwamitra. Dasharatha trusted, Lakshmana knows that he will only go, wherever Rama goes, he will go. Vishwamitra knows that if this boy comes, Rama will be at ease. So this is a beautiful lesson in trust. Because what happens after this is, when Rama is following Vishwamitra, Dasharatha has no idea what is happening. It is Lakshmana who is standing next to his brother and he is asking all the questions that Rama starts to think about. Lakshmana's first question is, how can we stay up at night and fight Rakshas as we are young boys? Rama asks Vishwamitra the same question. Then Vishwamitra tells him, I will teach you a mantra. That mantra will give you no requirement for sleep, no requirement for food. Very convenient mantras to learn. You don't need anything else. But this trust that Rama develops with Vishwamitra, that Rama and Lakshmana develop with each other and Dasharatha develops with Vishwamitra, this only comes... When you don't, you don't know what the result is. Dashratha has no idea that Rama is going to go with Vishwamitra. Vishwamitra has another plan. Now think about it. Vishwamitra is the Gayatri Mantra Drashta. Do you know what that means? That means that Vishwamitra saw and heard the Gayatri Mantra and he recorded it down. Today what we chant as the Gayatri Mantra, Vishwamitra was the one who gave us that mantra. Vishwamitra is such a Mahatapasvi. He can take care of his, his own Yajna. No? Why does he need Rama to come? Because Vishwamitra knows if this boy is going on and on sitting in the palace here, the actual work for which he has come will not get done. So if I have to make him do that work, I will simply say Yajna Rakshana, pull him out of the palace and go and put him in somebody's hand. She will take the rest of the story forward. Who is that? Sita. Sita. And that is exactly what Vishwamitra does. So once Rama finishes protecting Vishwamitra's Yajna, he asks Vishwamitra, where shall we go now? He does not say, ah, na mappa yelidru ishto tanka barbe ko, idat mela nan vapas ta ayodhya khokti ni, impartik ni hovi anta, he does not say. Because he trusts. And that trust comes when you leave your child outside of a safe environment. Parents believe that the safest environment for a child is home. But very often, when parents give the child trust and an unsafe environment, by unsafe I don't mean dangerous, when they give them an unfamiliar environment, and they hand over that trust to some other system. That other system here is Vishwamitra. When you hand over that trust and say, you take care, that person and that system will take care. Let us forget for one minute that Rama is Narayana. 
if you look at it just you can see so many parallels in your own journeys you also trusted this these educators this system and you believe that udbhava is the right place for your child that trust is something you'll have to continue because madhyadalli dashratha goes and say enilla actually syllabus yen en hel kodta idara anta but one sala i thought i'll just check adakke one parent teacher meeting if you do vishwamitra will not teach let vishwamitra do his job let dashratha remain in the pants lesson number 1 from ramayan involvement only up to a point ide tara when you go to the mountains what are the tallest mountains in india himalayas who lives in himalayas shiva okay who is the king of himalayas himavan does himavan have a family yes he does who are his members of his family parvati ha ah, ganga correct yes and his wife no papa no, you should not forget her no maina devi so parvati is who the daughter of himavan now himavan's daughter has taken birth because she wants to do tapas and she wants to marry shiva so we all know the story of how when she comes there first when she is first born or when she first appears over there himavan is very happy and shiva also comes to do tapas but then we know that kamadeva comes i'm not going to get into all the story because that's a very different tangent for her so kamadeva comes and after shiva burns away kamadeva shiva disappears now parvati comes back and she thinks all these days comfortable age mane inda hat step i have to step out go worship shiva and come back now shiva is gone i cannot sit in this palace and i cannot do tapas so parvati decides i will go i will go somewhere in the mountains and i will do my tapas so she goes to her father and she says i have to go for tapas now this is a struggle between parent and child the struggle to let go that is one of the greatest struggles in parenthood because that struggle comes from fear it comes from wanting to protect the child but very often children are blessed very often children know what they need to do nobody came to parvati and said ah amma i'll give you this google map location nin all hog madidre kandita if you do 16 somvaras he'll come anta yaro helilla she trusted her heart and she said i have to go and do my work this is karma yoga bhagavad gita talks about the same thing just because the environment at home is peaceful doesn't mean that is where the child is supposed to be all the time so himavan when she comes to him and she says i'll go and do tapas what do you think himavan says does he say i'll come with you no he says don't go she says why and he says amma you're a princess you have grown up only in a mahalam you have grown up in a palace you have grown up in all these surroundings do you know what tapas is tapas means sumne instagram nal hakok on photo tara you do not hold one japamala and sit tapas means you will be sitting in the bare environment it could be snowing it could be hot it could be pouring there are wild animals i don't know what could happen to you go and gives her all very logical conclusions on why she should not do this tapas so parvati looks at him and she says if i do my tapas over here it's not called tapas it's called relaxation because the fear the relaxation and the mental knowledge that oh if anything happens appa is there no appa will take care of it that will stop my growth i have to do it by myself so i will go he doesn't let her go even then parental pressure eshtu himavan adru eshtu knowing that his daughter is jagannatha despite that he could not so imagine the maya, the maya that affects him then ordinary human beings like us will get into it 10x so himavan says you cannot go and she says really i am the daughter of a stubborn mountain so if you are stubborn i am 10 times as stubborn i will go and ultimately parvati does go and she does that tapas by herself and that is when she comes back so this story that you can whether you look at the ramayana whether you look at the shiva purana where these stories come there's a reminder here that unless a child is allowed to choose their journey himavan did not did not choose this for parvati rama did or rather dashratha did not choose this for rama it is these characters who choose it for themselves and when they make that choice they make it so confidently that they never look back for one moment and think chha why did i do this and it is not in that moment when parvati is struggling her tapas does not film nalli or in amar chitra kada it's one page of tapas next page is their kalyana but in reality that tapas goes on for years and years similarly when your children are in the system it will take years and years for their own tapas to bear fruit but for all that while 
You cannot in between go and poke that tapas saying, instead of this, if I sent you to some CBSE school, it would have been easier now for you. Instead of this, I told you, you could have just gone to IIT coaching, everything would have been fine. Pa. Sumne that kind of thinking is very dangerous to tapas. Parvati kade agate. People come when she's doing her tapas and they poke her. Yaar koskarama is to tapas so. Shivan koskarama. Un yaro, yako, idala beka ninge. Instead of this, you can easily sit with some devatas no. All of this can deter, can deter and change the direction of tapas for children. So when you have the opportunity as parents to give your child an environment, give them trust. That is the biggest lesson that they will go out with. Because that trust is what will help them when they are in moments of decision making. There is one person in the Ramayana who is faced with the most number of complex, difficult decisions to make. And he makes them alone most of the time. You know who I'm talking about? Bharata definitely has a difficult decision to make. Yes. Lakshmana. But Lakshmana's decisions become easy the minute he sticks to Rama. All his decisions come as a result of that. Vibhishana also is definitely in a conflict. But there is one person who says, who promises to Rama that I will do your karyam. And when he goes to do that karyam, is filled with complicatedness. Who is that? Anjane Swami. If we look at Anjane Swami's journey, his, his journey starts from very young age. We all know that he thinks that the apple, that the sun is an apple and he goes for it. I'm not talking about the story. I'm talking about a little later. When Anjane Swami is growing up, he remembers that Surya came to him once and Surya said, Nane Guru Akti I will become Guru to you. So, Anjana Swami takes that written contract and goes back to him and he shows him that cheaty and he says, please, you promised me you'll become your guru. Surya says, hello, look at me. From morning till night, I'm busy. I don't have one minute. From the time I rise till the time I set. I do not sit quietly for one second. You want me in between to teach classes for you? What does Anjana Swami say? Oh, okay, sorry. He doesn't say any such thing. Anjana Swami's response is, what is there? You are moving from east to west now. All that while I will follow you. That's all it is now. As you are moving, you teach me. Very simple. This is the Katha. What does it literally mean? Can you literally follow the sun? Can you literally keep your eyes fixed on the sun? You will go blind. Fundamentally, you cannot look at the sun for so long. What does it mean here? It means that your biggest teacher is nature. Nature is most active from sunrise to sunset. Allow a child to be in nature. Anjane, Surya is so impressed by this answer that he tells Anjane Swami, come become my bhakta. And what is given in the Puranam is Anjane follows the movement of Surya. And that's how he learns. What that means is he looks at nature, he looks at birds, he looks at bees, he looks at snakes, he looks at every living being and he learns something. When does he look at all this? During Surya's Gamana. So he becomes a Shishya of Surya. He becomes a student of nature. And that student of nature is what helps Anjana Swami. When we romanticize bhakti, we always think bhakti is sitting in some puja room where there is cycle agarbhati and then we are looking at Mallipuva and suddenly Bhagavantan Pratyaksha. That is all a very romanticized idea of bhakti. But the most powerful idea of bhakti is looking at nature and realizing, oh, I can learn something from here. Oh, there is God here. Because when Anjana Swami goes, what is the Ramakaryam that he goes to do, that he promises Rama he will do? He promises or he doesn't promise? What he promises? He says that he'll find Sita. So he jumps and he reaches Lanka. He has entered Lanka. Now he has looked the whole night. Every door, every window he has peeked into. No sign of Sita. He's entered even Ravana's Antapuram into Ravana's palace. And he has seen all the sleeping women there. And he sees one lady who is sleeping there. And he sees that she's glowing. And you can see that this lady has done a lot of tapas. So immediately he takes his tail and he hugs it and he says, Kandain, Kandain, I've seen her, I've seen her, I've seen her. And then suddenly he looks and he says, Will Sita be sleeping so peacefully inside Ravana's palace? Then how did I mistake her? This lady is Mandodari. He sees Mandodari and he thinks, Okay, she's Sita. He makes a mistake and he comes out of the palace and he says, One whole night I have been looking. I did not see her. That too, before I left, I made big cinematic dialogue saying, I will go and I will find Sita and I will come back and I will not fail in my mission. Now I have come here. I don't see Sita. 
If I don't see Sita and I go back like this, Rama will hear this news and Rama will die. If Rama hears this news and Rama dies, seeing Rama dead, Lakshmana will die. If Lakshmana dies, Sukriva will feel bad that these two people who were depending on him, that they were no longer, he was not able to live up to his promise. So Sukriva will die. If Sukriva dies, all the Vanara Sena will die. If all the Vanara Sena will die, there will be complete chaos. Everybody will die because of me. Ayayo, 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 tuck, 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 Hanuman has dropped. In one minute, in Valmiki Ramayana, this comes as one series of shlokas. If you read those shlokas, you'll also be convinced, saying, oh my God, he's absolutely right. What does Hanuman do then? What should he do? So now he cannot find Sita. Just how much ever, prayatna, no bhala. There is no sign of Sita. Away. What should he do in this moment? Quiet up, manek hok bodala. Sorry? He chants Rama Mantra. In the Valmiki Ramayana, we don't see this. Uh, we see this in, in Ramcharitra Manas and other things. But what should he do? Sharanagati. What does Sharanagati mean? But is it easy to feel it in that moment? In that moment of conflict? What is What should he do? He prays and he thinks for one minute and he says, where am I making this decision from that I will die? This decision is coming from here. But I have spent my whole life learning from nature. I have spent my whole life learning that every being in the universe communicates, not just humans. So if I'm actually here in this moment in Lanka Dvipam, all I have to do is look at the trees, listen to the birds, look at the soil, and they will tell me where Sita is because they know where Sita is. It's not only human beings who know where Sita is. So he sits down and he says, let me just calm down. In Valmiki Ramayana, there's a very beautiful shlokam he makes saying, Anirvedo Shriyo Mulam. Anirveda means being calm, just not getting affected by all this Oh, Rama will die, then Lakshmana will die, then Sukriva will die, then Roma will die, then Bali will die, all, 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 all of this. No, just one minute of calm. And then he thinks, okay, let nature speak. Hanuman is just looking at the nature around him and he says, it's so beautiful. He's now realizing Lanka Dvipam is filled with nature. That around him there are massive trees and there are birds that are sitting on top of those trees and there are fruits on top on which the birds are eating. And you can see peacocks roaming around and Hanuman is looking at all of this and suddenly he starts to cry because it's so beautiful. You, somebody who is moved by nature can cry, not somebody who has never been in nature. Hanuman has been in nature his entire life. So now when he's looking at all this nature around him, suddenly he cries. When he cries, he notices that one teardrop, he can feel that there is a reflection of light on it. I don't know, have you ever noticed it that when you cry, and you squint your eyes on Churu, you can feel light over here. So he wonders, where is this light coming from? And then he turns. And when he turns behind him, he sees, oh, there's a different, uh, on Lal Bhaktara, there's one big garden inside. I've never seen this. I looked through Lanka so much, I didn't see all of this. Then he jumps in and then he finds that that is Ashokavana. So why does all this happen? Of course, after he finds Ashokavana, we'll go there in a minute. But why does all this happen? This happens because he knows how to listen to nature. You can only learn how to speak with nature if you spend time with nature. And when you spend time with nature, you develop a relationship with the earth. You develop a relationship with the trees. You develop a relationship with the Pancha Mahabhutas. Your children have that opportunity. That is an opportunity that most children today are absolutely devoid of. And it kills their fundamental instinct. So when your children are here, and I was just learning that they have the opportunity, they have unstructured time here. That unstructured time, I, I wouldn't even use that word unstructured because of course that is the, the best way to describe it. But that time is when nature is structuring time with them. Nature is developing a relationship with them and that will protect them. Because that relationship, because the Sita that he is trying to look for is Jagan Mata. Jagan Mata is there in the Pancha Mahabhutas. When your children are engaging with the Pancha Mahabhutas, it is nothing but Devi Aradhana that they are doing constantly. So Hanuman trust that. And that comes to him because of all those years of tapas and he goes into Ashokavanam. Now, next problem. He has entered Ashokavanam and he is wondering how do I look for Sita? Instagram profile though she didn't have. <laughs> Cannot match and see you right. Rama did not give him passport photo or Aadhaar card and say go look for her. How does he recognize that she is Sita? How do you put your brain to work? 
he sees there is one lady sitting at the base of an Ashoka tree. How should Hanuman know whether it's Sita or not? You tell me. Okay, she's chanting Ramanama. Okay, fine. Physically, how should you know she's Sita? She is one who's come from an ashram. Okay, so what would that mean? Okay, her attire could be different. Think about that. What is she wearing? Orange. Orange. That's TV Sita. <laughs> TV Sita is eternally sad, eternally crying. Valmiki Sita is not uh, that sad, Papa. <laughs> Hanuman looks. When was, how did Hanuman find out about Sita? The very first time? Because Ravana was going on the Pushpak Vimana above. And then when she saw that there were some monkeys below in Hampi, this happened in Karnataka, in Namma Karnataka, we're so fortunate. What does she do? She takes some of her abharanas, not all. She takes off some of her abharanas, tears one part of her cloth, ties it into them and throws it down. Then later when Rama meets Sugriva, he, uh, Sugriva gives it to him and he says, this is what we have. Now Hanuman is looking at all, he's looking at this lady and he's thinking, see she dropped one necklace, that necklace is not here. She dropped two pearl bangles. Those pearl bangles are not there. Then she tore her sari. The remaining part of her cloth is torn. So he has done all of this calculation and he says, this must be the one who Rama has left behind. Ishtena. Then he can say she has Sita and he can go back. No? But this is where you know that when you spend time with nature, when you are doing upasana in nature, you will give, be given that something that is called a Divya Drishti, that you can see something magical. So what Hanuman sees is he looks at this lady and she's obsessed with Rama. Obsessed means she doesn't have a tattoo of Rama written over here and here. Her obsession is in her heart. Even though she's in Ashoka Vanam, even though there are Rakshasis around her, everybody is around her, all kinds of things are happening. But for her, she can only see one thing, Rama. And when she sees Rama Meva Anu Pashyati, Valmiki says, Rama Meva, only Rama, that's all she can see. When she's thinking of Rama so much, she starts to look like Rama. So Valmiki says so beautifully, he says, Asya Devya Yatha Rupa. The way this Devi looks, Devi is because she looks so powerful. Asya Devya Yatha Rupam, Anga Pratyanga Saushtava. In every limb of her body, if I look at her legs, they look like Rama's legs. If I look at her hands, they look like Rama's hands. If I look at her eyes, they look like Rama's eyes. Anga Pratyanga Saushtava, Ramasya Cha Yatha Rupam, Asyayam Asitekshana. Rama, however Rama looks, she looks exactly like that. And that is how he concludes. He does not say, oh yes, her sari is torn, jewelry is missing, she's looking sad, uh, perfect description. No, he says, all these are there. But her mind is focused on Rama. She looks like Rama. This is Rahasyam that you will see in nature. This is a concept in nature that is called as biomimicry. That when you look at one plant or one thing in nature that is looking at something else, it starts to take that shape. Just take a creeper that grows on top of a, a plant. It takes the shape of the plant that it becomes. This idea in nature is extremely powerful because nature survives on this. In nature, most things are copying other things. It's not copying in a negative way. We keep whatever we think about, we become precisely that. Sita is becoming Rama because she's constantly looking at Rama. And now Hanuman is seeing her. So Ravana comes, Hanuman listens to all this discussion that happens between Ravana and Sita. Now Sita is feeling extremely desperate. Sita is ready to give up her life. Now in this moment, Sita has concluded. Ravana has come and he said, I will give you two months. If you don't accept in two months, you will become my breakfast. First word, first time we see the usage of the word breakfast is in Valmiki Ramayana. So he says, you'll become my morning breakfast. So he has gone. Sita thinks two months, Rama has not come. It is best I end my life. And she looks at her ekaveni, she looks at her plaited hair and she says, my hair is long enough, I can tie it till the branch of the tree and I can commit suicide. What should Hanuman do? You know, so much you don't have to think. What should he do? He should go and talk to her. No? But this Ravana has created one problem. He's such a confusing fellow. If Hanuman jumps like that as a monkey, she will not know whether it is Ravana or whether it is Hanuman. So Hanuman thinks, and Hanuman thinks, how can I comfort her without scaring her? Because this moment is very important. If he screams in, in Shuddha Samskritam, Shuddha Brahma Bharat Pararam, Kalatma Kaparameshwar Ram, she'll wonder, Ayyo Ravana Tirga Badhidana, because Ravana is a Mahabrahmana. In Sanskrit exam, he got 100 out of 100. So he can also do all of that. 
So she has no reason to believe that this is a, somebody who she can trust. So she's wondering, Hanuman is wondering, how can I win her trust? Trust. How can I win her trust? I have to speak a language that only she knows. I cannot speak Sanskritam because Ravana speaks to her in Sanskritam. So what other language is there? The language that Sita spoke in Mithila, in Bihar. Hanuman says, let me speak in that dialect. Okay, Sita grew up in Bihar. How did Hanuman learn this language? Hanuman was also born here in Karnataka in Anjanatri Parvata. How did Hanuman know that language? Because he followed the sun. When you follow the sun, it's not about literally, like we said, it's not sitting in front of the sun. It's roaming the course, moving around, picking up new things. Children pick up new languages, they pick up new skills. When they are exposed to different environments, it goes and sits inside them. And many, many years later, whenever they need it, it will come out. Anjanaya Swami may not have written an exam in this, but he just instinctively knew it and he speaks to her in that dialect. And then she wonders, who is speaking my father's dialect over here? Has my father sent somebody? She's already at ease. Then he says, in that dialect, he says, you know, there was a king in Ikshvaku Vamsham called Dasharatha, that Dasharatha was a Mahaparikrama, that Dasharatha has a son Rama, that Rama and his brother Lakshmana and his wife Sita came to the forest. She has heard the whole Ramayana. Then she is convinced. Then he jumps down and he says, Amma, I am Ramaduta, I have come. The rest of the story picks up from there. But where does that trust come from? Sita can only trust him when he uses a skill that he picked up. Did anybody tell him you need to pick up the skill? No. He picked it up instinctively. So these moments in the epic are very, very powerful because it is these that need to help us look at the way we look at education. Education is not literacy. Education is much, much more than that. Education is about being able to communicate verbally and non-verbally. All these characters. Anjana Swami was asked to go and give Sita the ring. He can go and take that ring and drop it from the tree and said, that's all they told me to do. My part is over, I'll go back home. But he doesn't do that. He goes, talks to Sita. Before he talks to Sita, he says, how should I convince her that I'm not Ravana? She has to feel safe. In between when she's talking to him also, she doubts. Many times she doubts, saying, is this Ravana? Is this somebody I can trust? After he establishes trust, directly can go home, no? He says, no, I have come here for two purposes. Rama only told him, go give Sita the ring if you see her. What does Hanuman say? I have to scare the Rakshasais. I have to let them know what is capable. How do you learn these kind of skills? Is this there in a syllabus book? This is buddhi. This buddhi comes when you can gauge a situation. Children are the most effective communicators at gauging situations. They know better than adults how to communicate because they, come, they do it from here. So this kind of thing only comes when you know instinctively this is the right thing to do. But that only comes when their parents, in the case of Anjana Swami also, then Anjana Devi and Kesari, leave him alone. Fundamentally, one great underlying policy in Sanatana Dharma is leave them alone. Don't always sit on top of their head. If you sit on top of their head, there will come a time and they'll sit back on your head. That's all it is. If you leave them alone, they will discover. When they discover is when they discover something inside. Because who comes to Anjani Swami and says, go to Ravana, go trouble him, go burn all of Lanka? No, he thinks, I have to go and I have to make him think. If one Vanara comes, this much with Dhamsam he can do. Imagine if the entire Ramasena comes, Ravana, it's time to return Sita. And that comes to him not just in his language, but even in the way he communicates. Because when Hanuman meets Sita, he communicates to her, Oh, you know what happened? Rama met Sukriva after you left. And then Sukriva sent all of these Vanaras to the four corners of Bharata Varsha. And then I came from the southern Varsha and Angada's thing. And then in the end, he says, Oh, by the way, Hanuman Nama Vanaraha. My name is Hanuman. Because over there, he has to be humble. But when he is going, when he wants Ravana's attention in the court of Ravana, what does he says? Say to Ravana, Jayatati Balo Ramo, Lakshmanascha Mahabalaha, Raja Jayati Sukhrivo, Raghavena Bhivalitaha, Dasoham Kosalendrasya Rama Syaklishta Karmanaha, Hanuman Chatru Sainyanam Nihantam Marutatmajad. One term. Hanuman Chatru Sainyanam Nihantam. I am that Hanuman who can count, countless Rakshasas will be under my feet. I am that Hanuman. In front of Sita, he does not say, you know who I am. I am that Mahaparakrami who is the son of Vayu. In front of Sita, it is, I am Hanuman. I am a monkey. I am a Vavara. In front of Ravana, it is, Naravana Sahasram me yudde pratiphalam bhavet. 
one sahasra, one thousand Ravanas cannot stand in front of me. Anuman is being a little arrogant, no? It's so Adhika Prasanga Aitana. Chanagira Aitana. When to, how to, where to speak, this is what our epics have left us with. Learn when to be humble. Lella Kade, when he goes to Ravana, he should not be like, actually, naan yen dodda mula. Illa naan sunne dangda. In front of Sita, he should not say, Ah, I am the greatest in the army. In fact, Sita asks him one question. She says, you are a Mahavanara. You were able to come from across the oceans and reach here. How did the rest of the Sena come? Because when Ravana brought me on Pushpak Vimana, Pushpak Vimana, by the way, we all think is like some auto size. It's not the size of an auto. It's a massive Vimana. So when she bends down from that and she sees Sapta Sagar Archa, literally, when she sees this and she's wondering, how did the rest of the Vanara Sena come? Sita is not con convinced at all. And she's wondering, if they can't come, they won't save me. The Rama and Lakshmana cannot come. And then Hanuman tells her, Amma, in this Vanara Sena, everybody is either as powerful as me or more powerful. There is nobody less powerful than me. Is that true though? Is that true? Oh, big question. <laughs> the truth is, we'll go back. Before, before Hanuman makes this jump, they're all arrived now at the show. Okay, this is before Hanuman has to jump to Lanka. Now, they're all looking. Sampatti has told them that over that side of the ocean, Lanka is there. Somebody has to jump. It is 100 Yojanas. Okay, I don't know the exact uh, conversion rate of Yojana. If it, do any of you know? Okay, you find out and let me also know. Okay, so it is 100 Yojanas. Somebody has to jump and go meet Sita and come back. Now, Jambavan looks. All the Vanara Sena is here. Angada, Neela, and very strong Sena is here. Jambavan knows that Hanuman can do it. So Jambavan can directly go and tell Hanuman, no, please, Hanuman, Uttishtha, get up and go do it. But Jambavan does not do that. He goes to one by one, he goes to each Vanara and he says, can you do? Can you jump? Ashti condescending Akkedala, he asks normally only, he says, will you jump? Angada says, Hogo then to guarantee, Vapas Bhatti no yelo nange Bhatti. One other says, Neela says, I can jump halfway. 50 Yojanas tanka maad bodo. Ad admi le yena agato yelo nange Bhatti. Each one of them is thinking, can I do it? I'm not so sure. Finally, he comes to Hanuman. Why does he do this? Jambon already knows that Hanuman can do it. Why simply him to know? Inge ten bodala, direct again. Why doesn't he go to Hanuman? You tell me. Hanuman is Guttak Beko. Meet the organ? Okay, Beraurge Hanumantan Shakti Gotavala and I know the chance there. After Hanuman goes and comes, then they can all say, if he asked me, I could have also gone, but he didn't ask me. It's a worldly management technique. You make people learn their own limitations first. Then you say, that's why I asked. But when he was asking Hanuman, Hanuman said, I don't think I can. So Jambavan says, Uttishta Harishar Dula. Ide tara, have you heard similar words? Uttishta something Shar Dula yenadu? Ah, Kausalya Supraja Rama Purva Sandhya Pravatpate, Uttishta Narashar Dula, Kattabhyam Deva Manika. What we are reading every day in Venkateshwara Suprabhatam is from Balmiki Ramayana. Because there Vishwamitra wakes him up like that saying Kausalya Supraja Rama owed one. Why does he say Kausalya's name? Because it is the first night that Rama has been away from his mother. Rama was never in a Gurukula. Krishna went to Sandipani Ashram. Rama didn't go to a Gurukula. The first night ever that he has sent, spent away from his mother, Vishwamitra also feels, Ayo Papu, how will the Magan be? So he takes his mother's name saying, Oh one who is very fond of Kausalya, who Kausalya is fond of, Uttishta Narashar Dula, wake up. Why? So that you can have big coffee, yeah? No. Uttishta Narashar Dula, Kattabhyam Deva Manhikam. It is time to do Deva Karyas. Because when the sun is rising, it is a time for prayer. It is a time for meditation. There, Vishwamitra wakes up Rama like this. Here, Jambavan says the same thing. Uttishta Harishar Dula. Uttishta, get up. Harishar Dula means amongst monkeys, greatest one. That is Narashar Dula, amongst gods, amongst Naras, amongst humans, you are the greatest. Amongst monkeys, you are the greatest. This is the power of a Guru. Vishwamitra is a Guru. Jambavan is a Guru. Here, they are not coming with a tag of a Guru and they are not owning an island for themselves. They are just coming quietly and they are identifying potential. 
Vishwamitra identifies Rama's potential and says, get up, it's time to do. It's not literally get up for just that day. He's saying, Rama, your avatarya karyam has to start. What you have come for is starting now. Because till now, you're only bringing joy to Dasharatha and Kausalya. Now, you must bring joy to the whole world, Jagadananda Karaka. Here, Jambavan is recognizing this potential inside Anjane Swami and he's waking up him up with the same intention. This is the potential of a guru. This is the reason trust is needed. Because when Anjana can trust Jambavan to say, you take care of my child, when Dasharatha can trust Vishwamitra to say, you can take care of my child, trust the guru to know what is best for the child. As a parent, you have blinders. As a parent, you can only see so much. But a guru can see like this. A guru has a wider vision of what is the best thing for the child. And they will take that child to the destiny. Because Jambavan is the only person who can do that for Hanuman. Vishwamitra is the only person who can do that for Rama. So on the basis of all his Bahu Parakramam, on the basis of all his inner potential, till then Hanuman didn't do any flexing of muscles and any of that. But based on his inner strength, Jambavan said, Nene Saryavata, he kills him and he sends him off. So now, when Hanuman has finished meeting Sita, he tells her, I have one small little thing left to do. What is that small little thing? He wants to go and burn down Lanka. So he's gone, he's even met Ravana, he's told him, one Vanara alone can do all of this to you. When he's coming back, all of this is over. Have any of you ever come back after you've done something very exciting? Never, huh? I am not burning Lanka, shit exciting Abhila, but normal exciting. Have you ever excitedly told somebody a story? When you're telling somebody a story, will you keep the most exciting bits till the end? Will you start saying, Havagena to Gurta, first time I'll go there. You build up the suspense, no? So Hanuman could have also told the story like that, no? When he lands back, first thing he sees is, what is the situation? Right now, am I telling a story or first do I need to make them feel comfortable? Because this is not, everybody is not waiting for a movie plot. They want to know, did you see or did you not see? Did you meet Janaki or did you not meet? Two words, contain, contain, Sita, contain. I saw her, I saw her, I saw Sita. Then he says, oh, you know, when I was crossing. So here, this is opposite of some Steven Spielberg action movie. First day climax head, climax head. But you say, you know, this happened, this happened, this happened. But I saw her. That comes when? That comes when you know how, what is the other person expecting from you? What does the other person want to know? Rama does not want to know. In Lanka, you know, the doors are so massive and so beautiful that from every pearl there is hanging one bird. No. Rama just wants to know, did you see Sita or not? My entire pranam is dependent on that. So that moment of intuition, of trust, that comes only when you interact with other beings. And that interaction has to be unstructured. It has to be intuitive. So there are a host of moments like this. But I think we cannot speak about trust without speaking about one character, not from Ramayana, but from elsewhere, who defined what is trust. And that character, like many of you, is a small child. So we all know the story of what happens when this child and his father are standing in front of a pillar. And that father says, is your God there in this pillar or not? But I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to talk about what happens to this child. Who is this child? Prahlada. So for one minute or for five minutes, I'll ask you to forget this Bhakta Prahlada of cinema. It's very, very different, very innocent Papa. Because the Prahlada and the Bhagavatam is a little bit of a different character. In Bhagavatam, what happens is, when Prahlada's character is born, when Prahlada is born, from the time he is born, Hirani Kashpo actually likes him. Papa, cinema nal shuru inda, they have problems. Illa. They have a very beautiful relationship. And appan I have to send my son to Gurukula. But so over involved parent Allah. So on thing you I told you, he got him back. And he told the guru, and he's a Raja, so you can't say no to him. And politicians are Makalita school You cannot say no. If they don't come to PTA, they can cancel the whole PTA also. So our is the entire Raja. So he's asked for Prahlada to come back. And Shukracharya's sons are the gurus in that ashram where Prahlada has been learning. So Prahlada has come. And I, I'm sure as parents you recognize this, that when your child is in a growing stage, 
even if others are not very supportive for a parent when a child says twinkle twinkle also parents are really really thrilled then they'll subject 10 guests to that and say you know what my son learned twinkle twinkle today and that's a hey amma twinkle twinkle then I'll, all the 10 people have to hear that and say very good very good so hiranya kashpu kade ase he calls prahlada and says tell me now what you learned prahlada says i love his hiranya kashpu says tell me what you like the most in everything that you learned by now prahlada has actually been a very good student in the gurukula so he responds saying what i like best is that the essence of all this is narayana hiranya kashpu looks a first doubt parenting technique number 1 if your child does something that you don't like you'll never blame the child you'll say who taught my child this he looks at the gurus and he says hey you will go to our parenting techniques 101 That katha only is continuing till now. Nothing. That is why Puranas are always relevant. Immediately, those two look and say, "Now I am going to be part. Promise, we didn't teach him any of this. We have hundred percent guarantee. Asura Guru Kula. Now Bhagwan Tan Bhagye here all day alone. Nothing. I don't know where he has learned all of this and come from. Here in a question time. In one thing or time, Kurti ni. This all full of irre smart bitto. Apas kardi. See, na thare. Kacha kach. So they go back and this time, so they scrub Prahlada even harder. They they teach him and they teach him all the shastras that are meant to be Nyaya Shastra, Dharma Shastra, Niti Shastra. All of this is taught him. Prahlada learns this also very happily, and he comes back again after one month. This time his father is more confident that now at least he would have learned the right things. So he asks him, Prahlada, from what you have learned, tell me two powerful lessons in everything that you have learned. So Prahlada says, you want to know the first lesson. श्रवणम कीर्तन विष्णो स्मरण पाद सेवन अच्छन वंदन दास्यम सख्यम आत्म निवेदन हिरण्य कृष्णपुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष्पुरुष
Hiranyakashipu has one very beautiful varam. You know what that is, know that boon? What is Hiranyakashipu's boon? I should not die at AM, PM, Agalanange. Amele? Animal or living being. Animal or human. Okay. Day or night. Then, in or out. With weapons, without weapons. Anything else? Uh, animal, animal. Ah, not animal, not human. Should. Not on the ground, not on the sky. Correct. So, if you have to look at an example of a great designer, it is Hiranyakashipu. Because Vishnu Papa and other avatars, Ravana just said, Oh man, a man cannot kill me. So, Rama came, Rama came perfectly as a man and killed him. But in this avatar, Vishnu had to say, Ayo, Idu Allah, Adu Allah, you have to say, Skonda, I have to come. Perfect designer under Hiranyakashipu. Now, Hiranyakashipu is thinking that I have earned all this through tapas that I should not kill, I should not be killed here, I should not be killed there. And Hiranyakashipu thinks he is immortal. His son has not done any of that tapas, but his son still has all those siddhis. Hiranyakashipu knows he cannot die normally, but his son, without doing any of that tapas that his father has done, his son is escaping freely because his son is trusting. When Prahlada has pushed down the cliff, Prahlada does not, cinema Prahlada says, Narayana, please save me. Bhakta Prahlada and Bhagavatam does not say save me. When Bhakta Prahlada is being pushed down the cliff, he says, oh, I can see Narayana there, I can see Narayana there. The Narayana who is in the ground is now duty bound to protect Prahlada. When Hiranyakashipu puts Prahlada in the middle of a snake pit, Prahlada looks at all the snakes and he says, oh, I can only see Narayana here who is lying down on the snake. What is the name of the snake that Narayana lies down? Adishesha. He can only see this. When you are trusting something, when you are trusting divinity, you will see divinity everywhere. That divinity will not disappoint you. Hiranyakashipu Papai Rattarada is still true. Pralada ni is no avashatta. It's immediately he picks it up. That is the essence of trust. We can talk about Pralada's bhakti. This is the only chapter, by the way, in the Bhagavatam, where the chapter is not named after the avatar. What is the avatar of Vishnu here? Narasimha. We don't call this chapter in Bhagavatam as Narasimha avatar. We call this as Prahlada Charitra. Because if you learn how to be like Prahlada, then Narasimha will come. Narasimha coming is much later. First, what has to happen is you learn to trust. And that trust comes when the child is in the right environment. What was the right environment for Prahlada? He got it when he was in his mother's womb. His mother was kidnapped by Indra. Then Narada says, Hey Indra, you leave her over here. I will go and give her back to Hiranyakashipu. That time Narada talks to Hiranyakashipu's wife. Her name is Kayadhu. And he talks to her about who is God. What is God? What is trust? What is belief? And all these things. She falls asleep, Aramaki. But the child inside her absorbs all that. That environment is essential for a child. So the hope from the story is not about Narasimha coming from some energetic pillar. It is about what is the environment that you are creating for your child. Are you being the parent like Hiranyakashipu who is imposing on your child and saying, this is what you have to learn. This is what you I think is necessary. Or are you letting your child discover their own journey? Prahlada discovered his own journey and today he is the only bhakta, he is the only example of a bhakta where Narayana came for one bhakta alone. There is no other avatara like this. It is one bhakta and one bhakta alone, Prahlada was. That discovering of a child's journey is important. It's not only about Narasimha Tattva. So my hope and invitation to all of you as parents is also that we learn the essence of understanding how can children discover their own journey. What do we have to do? as parents and as educators, as facilitators, to let them find that journey. Because when we let them find their journey, Rama will find Sita, Hanuman will find Sita. When we let them find their journey, Prahlada will find Narasimha. But if you don't let them find their journey and you sit on top of their heads like Dhritarashtra did with the Kauravas, then ultimately that story takes a very different turn. Our Itihasas, our Puranas are filled with stories. I will not say morals because morals is a very Western concept. There is no good and bad. There are choices. Enable your children to make choices and enable them to take responsibility for their choices. There are stories that talk about how even Hanuman feels, I made this choice. Did I make a mistake? That is an important, that is what we call as unmake That you constantly look back and you reflect. Am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the wrong thing? And through that process, you strengthen your own relationship. Do that with yourselves and your children will absorb that. 
learn to live with conviction in your own heart saying yes my children are on the right path and your children will observe that they will not look at what you say to them they will observe what you how you are with yourselves be it as parents be it as educators and i think with that i want to slowly kind of wrap up the last bit of this and move this to a bit more interactive space where we can open this out to questions and thoughts because uh, i think this is such a lovely audience that i i don't want to call it a day but um, in the last part of this i just want to also deepaka had requested if i can mention a little bit about my own journey to be honest i'm very uncomfortable mentioning about my own journey because i don't want this to be about the individual what's amazing here is the power of stories what's amazing is a prahlada a hanuman or a rama the medium that it's coming to you is only because of trust my own journey is that of somebody who i have been obsessed with mythology for as long as i can remember i never believed or i never thought i have to make a career out of it i went through a regular education system and just a while ago i was telling deepak i wish if i had been in a school like this i don't know what wonderful effects it would have had on have on me but i didn't i went to a regular um, convent education and in many ways i'm unlearning a lot of that even now and i do regret that I, but such systems did not exist then so i cannot hold anybody responsible for it it is what it is i went through the rat i went through architecture i liked architecture i discovered that i had a passion for it all along something was missing some part of me still felt like i'm not 100% of me is not present in this job and many many years later after i completed my masters in another country where i felt like god why am i in this country i i don't even relate to this context and i came back here i realized architecture is great it keeps me happy but there is another space that is happier for me and that is my roots and it is then that i made i, I cannot even say i made a decision because it's not that one fine day i woke up and i said oh i will become a storyteller no it's it's a process and the process comes through various choices it comes through sitting with a decision and being okay with both parts of a decision and being okay with the fact that it may not look the same i do not i will not sit here and tell you that i do not face peer pressure i will not sit here and tell you that i am not judged in fact i was just telling manjuana on the way that some of my friends look at me and ask me are you going to become a god man and it is peer pressure like this that can periodically negatively affect your child but despite that it is possible to carve a niche it is possible to stand up on your own feet whatever your chosen field is be it arts be it architecture be it science studies be it economics humanities whatever it is there is always scope where there is trust so i think that's all that i need to mention about my journey and not make this you know ted talk that i'm not giving it to you but i think what i want to leave you with is hope that your children are in a wonderful environment and it is a blessing and it is chosen for them none of this happens by coincidence there is no word called coincidence in sanatra dharma there is only something that is preordained but from here it is a karma marga it is a karma that they choose and that you choose for them and it is a karma that they come here on a daily basis and enable that for themselves so support them in that journey it may not be easy but you will have to unlearn before you can make or you can enable them to learn so with that with that hope offering this to the feet of sharada who has brought all of us here and we can open this for a few questions and a few discussions about different topics in this realm as a whole so yes you don't have to feel obliged to ask a question so, so. no questions are you Uh, when we came here we came with that intention 
we met the people, we met the teachers, we looked at the environment, and uh, we, we thought this is the best place for our children. But if you are, if somebody had asked us, we wouldn't have been able to express it the way we do. We felt like you were speaking on our behalf. Thank you for saying that. I think speaking about it is one thing, but walking the talk is what you all did. So kudos to all of you for enabling that trust. And I hope you enable it for others. Because when you have that conviction for your children, 10 people will look at you and say, you know what, they did it. So maybe I can also do it. That's that's how change starts. So kudos to all of you. I mean, you all are an inspiration rather than the other way around. So thank you. Either I have thoroughly convinced or confused everybody. That's why I decided. Sure. So I think um, for, so for those of you who heard the question, it was how did I pick up all of this because I still had a very conventional background that I came from. Um, what really was a big blessing for me was that I identified that there were some areas I was very, very keen on studying formally. Formally in the sense not taking exams, but from gurus. So Veda was one of them, uh, Vedanta was one of them, um, Karma Margam, different um, aspects of Veda. and. I think what happens when children are exposed to just one idea is one door, it opens many other doors. So through that I realized, okay, Jyotish Shastra works like this. Okay, Vedanta Shastra works like this. So I will not ever claim to be a scholar simply because I'm not. Uh, I, I'm here out of passion. But what I did discover was that there is a lifelong learner in me. And that sense of learning is what takes me back to it every day because I don't claim to know anything I mean, I spoke to you about Ramayana, but there are more than 22,804 Ramayanas available in the world, each of which has variants. I cannot claim to know all of them. So all I did was, or all I continue to do is ensure that whatever I'm doing, I'm doing with sincerity. That even if I say I'm just picking up this one thing, I want to know as much as I know today. That much is enough for me. So what helped me was trusting gurus, trusting people who knew better than me, saying, please correct me if I'm just swinging in the heavens and I'm just feeling like oh I read two books now I feel like I know everything pull me back to earth keep me grounded that helped me more than technical because technical knowledge especially in today's world is easier to obtain what is harder to obtain is the samskara to be able to say I don't know and I was extremely fortunate because I had gurus who, who continue to bring me back to earth level saying you don't know sit quiet sitting quiet I think if I have to answer one in one two words how did I learn I learned how to sit quietly so that sitting quietly is, I mean, that's what I was doing this afternoon when I was watching some of the kids. I was just sitting quietly looking at them saying, wow, they know way more than I can ever imagine myself knowing. And that's that's where learning stems from. It comes from a space of quiet. That is, that's how it is for me. So. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's a very interesting question about how do you know somebody is the right guru? There's this saying in English that says when the when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And I feel like that's a very very often used quote. And very recently I heard a beautiful take on it that says that where somebody said it's not about a a teacher appearing. It's not about you know oh I'm ready now so I'm, where is my teacher why is he not walked in from the door. It's more about saying when we recognize that we are learners we start learning from everything. Like I have learned things from an environments or learned from environments that I would not convince consider conventional. So I think on one hand it's about just accepting that I want to learn and then automatically. There are different things that teach me, not just 
physical gurus. Because Dattatreya said this, uh, Dattatreya, the Avadhuta Swami, when he was asked, who is your guru? He said, why? One, two, I have 24. And he pointed at 24 elements in nature. For example, he said, the python is my guru. Can you imagine why a python, what does a python do? What differentiates a python from other snakes? Sorry? Stira. Okay. So what is what does that stiratva mean? How is a python still? How does a how does a python eat its food? Swallows whole. Does a python go in looking for its food? Whatever comes in its vicinity most of the time, it takes that. This in Sanskrit is called as Ajagara Vritti. Ajagara Vritti means you are not running after food. You are saying whatever comes to me, I'll eat that and content with that. After a snake eats that. It doesn't say Radmila on Domino's pizza no bacon. It's very happy. Whatever you get, most of our lives is obsessed with acquiring hunger, with what we call as um, scarcity mindset. I don't know if I'll have it when I'm 60. So for a retirement plan, I'll start working from age 8. That kind of thing is what Dattatraya said. No, Python is in nature, there's a guru. It's teaching me whatever comes your way, eat it and be happy. Saako. Hotte tum you have to eat. Not more than that. So I think... The idea of Guru itself is actually present all over. Uh, and I think having said that, yes, the need for a physical Guru becomes apparent when one wants direction. And I believe that comes when it has to. It becomes extremely personal and individualized for many people. But largely, I think, yeah, and to answer your question, if you want to read more about, you should read up about Dattatraya's 24 Gurus. He takes 24 examples from nature that really make you think, oh my goodness, just in this one square foot of land, every guru I need is actually here. I don't even need anybody beyond that. So it challenges conventional uh, learnings in many ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So, my understanding, talk by itself is blind. Beautiful. There is nothing like. I talk little bit. Yeah. Talk little yeah. Bit. Exactly. Is there a line between the trust and blind trust? Is there a negative connotation to that? Beautiful. Beautiful. I think blind faith and trust can be two things, right? When you you don't know something, but you're just willing to believe in it. Like most of our politicians, like we just believe them not knowing what they'll bring in the next quarter when we elect them. But more than that, right? Jokes apart, I think blind faith can be also dangerous in the sense that when we trust something wholly, it's different from saying, I will not look at any surroundings. I will not look at the context. So let's take the idea of putting your children into power as, a, as an example. You're all here. You all trusted the school. Was it, is it blind faith? No. Oh, how, how? Tell me how. How, on what basis did you put your children here? Any one of you can, can share. The people. So it's not blind. There's already some reference, something that, okay, I came, I saw a system. Suppose you had just seen this land and you saw a board saying, Udbhava, will you take your child and say, from tomorrow you're here? There's some system. You 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 have something to fall back on and say, okay, the people are giving me some sense of assurance. So trust begins when there is some thing that you latch on to, something that you say, okay, this is making me feel safe. With blind trust, what happens is even that is not visible. There is just no way to say, okay, this is okay. Having said that, trust also brings conflict. When we trust also, it's not that everything is smooth, right? If you look at a whole host of Bhakta's journeys, they begin with trust. They begin with Shraddha. This is why sometimes I feel English really does not cut it because it, it there's only one word for many things. Sanskrit has two words and many of you would have heard this word. What is, have you heard the word Shraddha? What does Shraddha mean? Faith. What does uh, Vishwasa mean? Nambike. Nambike. What does Nambike mean? <laughs> Faith. Shraddha, Vishwasa. Why two words for one thing? Shraddha is the faith that you give or is the term that you give for faith based on what somebody else. Somebody else said, your parents tell you, your elders tell you, trust God, good will happen to you. That is Shraddha. When it becomes your own experience, it becomes Vishwasa. Up till then, it is Shraddha. Yes, somebody said this. Shraddha literally means belief in Shastra is called a Shraddha. 
Because you do it with extreme belief, it is called Shraddha. That is where the word Shraddha comes from. Shraddha andre nam yallar ko vithin kayo from Pitru Loka to Panta na manji bar bittta ra. Unge nila. What you do with more Shraddha. Shraddha means you believe. Our head kottru nam geta. This is the right thing to do. I trust it. But when I start to trust it, I may be conflicted. Tyagaraja Swami. Have you heard of Tyagaraja Swami? Who is Tyagaraja Swami? One of the kids tell me. You not heard? You all are learning some of his music compositions, no? Okay, one of the adults tell me. Tyagaraja Swami is one of the most phenomenal bhaktas of Rama. It's not that his journey doesn't have conflict in it. Have you heard of Bhadrachal Ramdas? Can I take two minutes to tell you one story about Bhadrachal Ramdas? Is that okay? Do we have two minutes time? So Bhadrachal Ramdas is a bhakta who trusts Rama with his whole heart. And there is a temple in Bhadrachalam, which before Bhadrachal Ramdas's time was absolutely, there was no temple. There was just an idol of Rama, Sita and Lakshmana. Bhadrachal Ramdas uses his own money and gets a temple made. When he gets the temple made, people start to come. All of this happens. But after some time, people go to the king and tell him, you know what? Bhadrachal Ramdas was a tax collector. That was his day, his nine to five job. Says he has used the taxpayer's money and he has gotten all the temple built. Immediately, the king, without conducting an investigation, has put Bhadrachal Ramdas in jail for 12 years. Now, you tell me, for somebody who trusted Rama, for somebody who believed that this was the right thing, that Rama would take care of him, is this fair? No, it's not fair. It's not one day or two days, 12 years he's in jail. And Bhadrachal Ramdas, when he's sitting in jail also, he's not sitting saying, okay, let me wait for the Lord to come out. In fact, Bhadrachal Ramdas gets so angry with Rama. In one composition, he lists out all the things that he got made for Rama. And he says, Sitamma ko jayisti chinta ko patakamu. For Sitamma, he got this pendant made. Ramachandra, this cost padivela varahalu. Varahalu is the currency of those days. Ramachandra, this cost 10,000. For Bharata, I got this. For Lakshmana, I got this. For you, I got this. Then he gets so angry and he says, Who sent all this money? Your father Dashratha sent from Ayodhya. He didn't send. Your mama Janaka sent from Mithila. He didn't send. Then he says something in Telugu to him. The Hindi equivalent of this term is Kiske Baap Ka Maal hai. He says, Yavadampa Sum Mani. Kiske Baap Ka Maal hai. Who sent this to you? Nobody's. This is my money. So please come now and free me of this unnecessary theft of this charge and relieve me. That night, to the king, two brothers come and they come with ten bags full of currency that has never been seen before. And they say, our names are Ramoji and Lakshmoji. We have come to return the money that Bhadrachal Ramdas has, has taken from the treasury. Please free him from jail. If you go to Golconda Fort today in Hyderabad, you will see the jail where Bhadrachal Ramdas was kept. If you go to the temple of Bhadrachal Ramdas, of, of uh, Rama in Bhadrachalam, there's a museum where the coins that were given to the king are there. Those coins have never been seen before, never been seen after. That is proof of how trust goes through conflict. But even in that conflict, he didn't say, Rama, you are not there. He said, you are there, so please get up and come. So trust also goes through difficult moments. It hardens into unshakable belief at some point. If it is blind and the source is, okay, that I should do this. And if it's not strong enough, it will fade off. But if it translates into experience, see, they said it, it's good for me. But even though it's good for me, it's difficult, but I'll stay. It moves into unshakable belief. So I think that's the the trajectory of trust, the way I see it, at least. So well, that's a very powerful question. So and something I think is relevant to each each one of us in our own journeys. Anything else that you would like to to sit on? Uh, so, like many performing artists, I, I travel, I, um, there are different organizations that host programs. So, most of the time I do uh, storytelling for such organizations and festivals and a host of things. So, yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. 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 
so okay how, how to sure absolutely uh, i think this is something that that initially when i started my journey when i used to look at any conversation right in in a purana let's say parvati is saying something to shiva i i would see that there are layers of interpretation that one interpretation is saying this there are written interpretation saying this 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 but sometimes i would feel on what basis are these interpretations coming is it somebody felt this so therefore it is this interpretation because in the moola for example hanuman talking to sita hanuman talking to ravana one character two different ways of talking there are 10 different interpretations of what this means so how do you know which is the right one to trust so i went to my guru with this exact question and i said what is the answer and he said why are you asking me and i said who else should i ask and he said ask yourself and he taught me something very powerful he said if you sit to the question for long enough the answer will emerge and i think that is really important in the space of of interpretation of purana and itihasa or vedanta because everything becomes subjective so i this concept of hanuman and sita and ravana is a lesson for us in humility but to somebody it could be a lesson on what they want to hear it could it could be extremely subjective so these interpretations exist to the best of my knowledge i try not to add in oh i thought this either it is based on somebody's solid experience or i strongly believe with conviction that i'm seeing this and i'm able to experience it then only i share it so that it doesn't become i think this so it's a this is very cool to share my my focus is let me be as authentic as i can but what i see is what i share so that's that's the way i try to try to look at it so it becomes beautiful when there are different ways of looking at the same same situation so uh, i'll just take take the opportunity to talk about how one thing that shook my mind when i first heard it was an interpretation i've never heard seen in a written text but i heard it one time and it changed my whole overview of things how many of you have heard of panchamukha anjaneya so this is hanuman with five faces can you tell me what those five faces are ah uh, so vanara mukham which is the natural mukham that he always has okay varaha mukham okay varaha is the bore narasimha mukham hayagriva mukham is the fifth one what's the fourth one this is garuda mukham okay garuda the bore so this is panchamukha anjaneya typically you see them like this but actually if you see the murti four are here and one is here on top this is as per dharma shastra is the way is constructed this is panchamukha anjaneya is panchamukha anjaneya there in ramayana no are we willing to see how is there just look at these five faces for what do they do okay these five avataras so you are learning about dashavataras right okay so let's keep aside the monkey mukham because the monkey mukham is there you see that mukham no throughout the epic you're seeing that right so we'll count that mukham as there four mukhams we have to find where are they ramayana in ramayana which part do you see hanuman's maximum involvement in in the sundara kanda when he goes to lanka and is looking for sita that's where hanuman is the main character rama is papa not even there okay let's look for these four mukhams inside that sundara kanda okay let's look at first mukham that is varaha mukham what does varaha do what does the avataram do when does varaha avataram come hiranyaksha and after uh, varaha kills hiranyaksha what does he do he picks up bhumi devi from where from the samudra from the ocean he picks her varaha swami picks up bhu devi from samudra and keeps her afloat anjane swami meets sita who is bhumi devi putri and she is about to die in samsara she is about to die in sorrow so he picks her up from shoka samudra and he picks her up that is varaha mukha it is not literally about varaha coming it is what does varaha do varaha picks you up when you are feeling extremely dejected in life varaha swami thinking of varaha swami will keep you afloat because anjane swami does that sita is about to commit suicide and he comes and he picks her up saying don't worry rama will come rama will come very very fast that is varaha mukha narasimha mukha what does narasimha do we discussed the condition hiranyakashipu can't be killed with uh, weapons or no weapons how does narasimha kill him with his nails if you look at sundara kanda after hanuman says bye to sita he says amma on chick kelsa ide ad mukskon hogten nanu what is that chick kelsa burning lanka but before that what does he do he destroys ashokavanam fully the destruction how does he do 
choosing this. Ra- Ravana sends Rakshasas after Rakshasas to come and kill him. Because he says, go and capture that monkey. Hanuman doesn't use the Gada. There's no mention of the Gada in Sundarkanta. He uses only his Nakhayudas. Narsimha. That is Narsimha Mukha. Garuda Mukha. In the Yuddha, when they're fighting the battle between Rama and Ravana, at that time, Ravana sends Indrajit. And he says, launch the Sarpastras on the entire Sena. So Indrajit launches the Sarpastras. The Sarpastras take over the entire Sena of Rama, including Rama, including Lakshmana. Only three people are spared. Vibhishana. Because he is an uncle of Indrajit, it doesn't affect him. Sarpastra means the Sarpa comes and ties itself around him and it's uh, basically pricking them. It's um, hissing and biting them. So one person that is spared is Vibhishana. Second person who is spared is Jambavan because he has a special vara. Third person is Hanuman. Now in all this, Rama is in so much pain and he's looking and he's wondering who can help us. He thinks of Garuda. Or sorry, he looks around for Hanuman and suddenly Garuda appears. Garuda and snakes are mortal enemies. As soon as Garuda comes, all the snakes die and everybody is released from the Sarpasti. He thought, Rama thought, where is Hanuman, where is Hanuman? He thought of Hanuman, Garuda came. That is Garuda Mukham. That is the third Mukham. Then, the, uh, this is the fourth Mukham because we counted Kapi Mukham as well. Hayagriva Mukham. Hayagriva Mukham is Jnana Mukham. Hayagriva is the god of knowledge. Hanuman is the god of knowledge who tells everybody, I found Sita. Knowledge is about finding. He tells everybody, I found Sita. Panchamukha Anjaneyas are there in Ramayana. If you look like this, you'll be able to find. So these interpretations come, these kind of things come to answer your question. When you engage with it so much, that they start to speak to you saying, Oh, it's right here. In the Valmiki Ramayana that I read you. But what happens is we love to get into the other side. Oh, Panchamukha Anjaneya was actually invented in 78 BC. While as Valmiki Ramayana was written in 3rd BC. So therefore, this is a later interpretation. And we get stuck with ideas like that. That may make historic sense. But from the perspective of interpretation, I think Itihasas and Puranas speak. And they are willing to speak to anybody who speaks to them. So, nothing special about me in that context. It's anybody who is sincerely willing to engage will, will find meaning in them. So, next time you see Panchamukha Anjaneya, remember that you have a very special connection with him now. So, yes. I think with that, we'll call it a uh, day. Thank you for being such a heartwarming and such an engaging um, I cannot even say group of people because this has felt like a Divya Satsangam for me. And uh, to have accepted me into this wonderful family of Uddhava, deep, deep gratitude to all of you, uh, to, to this entire family. I, I feel like this is one large family that I'm lucky to have connected with and spent this auspicious Dwadashi with. So with my Kritagnyatulu to all of you um, for this entire, not just what you all are doing today, but for the Shramadhanam that you are doing, ultimately, you are raising children collectively as parents and educators that are going to go out there and they are going to be change makers. And no, in no way is there anything, something, is no way is there something as too small a change maker. So you are enabling wonderful agents of powerful change and that powerful change you are enabling for them within. You are blessed as parents and as facilitators to be able to do this for them and for, them, for yourselves. So, my gratitude and my namaskaram to all of you for the work that you are doing. Swasti.